even though we've been operating 17 and a half years, the spacecraft was actually built in the early 80s. And so it's much older than 17 and a half years. And so if you think about that, that's been a tremendous piece of engineering that's uh, give, been given to the scientists as a tool to use for their exploration. It's been fantastic. The process by which that took place was something that people thought was very complex, had a lot to do with the dynamo uh, inside the sun and moving sunspots around on the surface. What we found was that at least seen from Ulysses, the process is very simple. It's like having a bar magnet with a north and south pole that just simply rotates through the full 24 hours, if you like, on the clock in 22 years. We know that now that the, the solar wind from the polar regions is fast. It's faster than what we'd seen before in the ecliptic, very often. It travels about 800 kilometers a second, whereas the speed that we normally see in the ecliptic is half that. And we found that this is really the, the normal solar wind. It fills much of the heliosphere over much of the solar cycle. What Ulysses has been able to tell us is how the shape varies in over the full sphere, and it's not a sphere actually, it, it's, it's compressed towards the nose, as we call it, and has actually a tail. It looks much more like our Earth's magnetosphere. We know that when the sun is active, that most of the activity occurs near its equator. And we assumed that the radiation coming from the sun, which is potentially harmful to astronauts and can damage spacecraft, came to us more or less also from those regions. By going outside of the plane of the ecliptic with Ulysses, we've seen solar storms and their effects at high latitudes over the poles everywhere. So we know that these solar storms are directed, can, can be directed anywhere. On the large scale, of course, we're all moving with the galaxy. The, 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 the Earth, the solar system, the heliosphere are located in an, one of the, or outside one of the arms of our galaxy. So we are all moving. And even the, the material around the heliosphere is actually a wind. So there are different clouds moving past the heliosphere, and it's quite a turbulent environment which we live in. We, we don't feel it, of course, here on Earth. We only feel terrestrial wind, but it's equally dynamic as our own weather. At that point, we got the, the power supply had decayed to the point where we needed to do something quite rigorous, and that involved turning off our main transmitter. We, the intention was for a few hours a day, switch it back on when we needed it to transmit data and switch it back off again outside of the communication passes. Unfortunately, we tested it the first time, switched it off, it never came back on. I think the, the key thing with Ulysses is going to be its breadth. We've learned certainly about the solar wind and the heliosphere in three dimensions, and in fact in four dimensions if we include time, because we've covered almost a full solar magnetic cycle, almost 22 years. But Ulysses has taught us not just about our heliosphere, but about its neighborhood, and even about something of the origins of our universe, because we've been able to measure uh, types of material and, and properties of, of interstellar particles, which were never measured before. And we, using those measurements, we've been able to look back in time, if you like, to almost the start of the universe. So it's, it's been a great mission, it's been very broad in its science, and it's certainly fulfilled and exceeded all our expectations. It's like saying goodbye, obviously, to an old friend. It's, it's sad, but you've had a fantastic adventure together, and it's seen me personally develop from being a young student through to a grandfather, and seen many other changes in the way we do business in Europe in space. And so it's, it's really been a companion over those 30 years. And so it's, it's sad to say goodbye, but uh, it served as well and uh, certainly lived up to its mythical uh, namesake's reputation.